everyone, this is CLS All in One, and today I'm going to show you how to do various different crimp connections and splice connections. So I'll be showing you how to do a butt connection. This is a very common connection to join two wires together. Next I'll be showing you how to do a butt connection with heat shrink. This will insulate the wire and seal it to where there's no gaps. Then I'll show you how to do a female and male connection. This is a very common connection for speaker wires. Next we'll be doing a ring terminal connection. This is a very common connection for a ground or a battery terminal. Then I'll be showing you how to do a spade terminal connection. This is a very common connection for amplifiers. And I'll also be showing you how to do a splice connection. This is a very common connection for trailer wire harnesses. So you're going to need some terminal connections of some sort. I just purchased an entire set. This is a 520 piece set from Harbor Freight for only $10. And it comes with all these different fittings. It even has a chart on the inside that explains what size of wires will work with what fittings. You'll also need a pair of wire strippers. I picked this up at Harbor Freight for only $5. So this is actually a wire stripper multi-tool. It does various different things. It strips wire. It also crimps connections here. And then located right here is holes to check various different thread sizes for screws. And if they're a soft metal screw, you can actually cut them here also. Then located just below that is where you can cut the wire. Right here, if you put a wire in between that gap and then close it, there's a blade there that will chop the wire right in half. And for wire stripping, it works pretty similar. You just stick the wire in the appropriate hole here, clamp down, then you can pull the sheathing off the wire. Okay, so we're starting off with probably the most common connection, just a regular butt connection to join two wires together. And there's usually a built-in stop that's located in the middle of the tube that stops the wire from pushing all the way through the tube. So our goal is, is to make this connection crimp down to this piece of wire. But before we can do that, we're gonna have to strip the end of this wire here. To figure out the gauge size of your wire, a lot of times it's listed right on the wire itself. As you can see here, it says 18 gauge, but sometimes it's listed on the packaging. If your wire gauge size is not listed anywhere, you can test what gauge it is by starting with the largest circle on the wire strippers and work your way down to where you're stripping nothing but the sheathing and not cutting the wires. This wire is 18 gauge, so I'm going to line it up in the second hole here to strip the wire. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the wire at the second hole here, go ahead and clamp down, and when I clamp down, that's going to cut the rubber that surrounds the wire, the rubber sheathing. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull away from the wire with the pliers. And when I pull away, it's going to go ahead and rip that sheathing off. And normally, you only want to strip about 3 eighths of an inch off the end of the wire. If you strip any more than that, you might have bare wire exposed after making your connection. And if you have a hard time stripping the wire, a good trick is to go ahead and clamp down on the end of the wire there and go ahead and twist back and forth. And that will help cut the sheathing and make it much easier to pop off. Now it should just pull right off here with not much effort at all. So after stripping the wire, I like to take the ends and go ahead and twist them tight and that makes a nice tapered end to them so they go into the terminal connections easier. So I got two nice clean looking stripped ends here and now they're ready to attach to the butt connector. This red butt connector is designed to fit wire gauge sizes 16 through 22. So we're going to go ahead and insert the wire through the hole of the terminal here. And again, it's going to stop about halfway because there's a built-in stop there. Now it's time to go ahead and crimp the connection. And we're going to be crimping it right here where the red dot is, where it says 22 through 18 gauge. So I'm going to be crimping on the left side of this connection where the wire is inserted. But you want to make sure where you make your crimp that you're not too far over and that you're crimping down where metal is located, not just plastic. So there's a metal tube inside this connection. And when you squeeze those pliers shut, it pinches that metal shut and pinches the wires in place. Here's an up close look at that crimp connection, but after making the connection, you want to make sure to go ahead and lightly tug on the wire to make sure it doesn't come loose. If the wire pulls out when testing it, you might just have to start over with a new connection. If it just feels loose, go ahead and recrimp it, but this time crimp both sides and then test it again. Okay, this side is done now. Now it's time to go ahead and attach the other side and make our crimp connection. We're going to go ahead and insert it in the hole there. Now I'm going to hold it in place and then go ahead and crimp it. Now I'm going to go ahead and rotate it and crimp it again so I have a nice tight connection. Now I'm going to go ahead and test it by tugging on it and make sure nothing pulls loose. Okay, this connection is all finished. Let's move on to the next one. These are heat shrink butt connections. This is very similar to the butt connection we just did, but it has built in heat shrinks that shrink when you apply heat and then insulates the wire. Here's the regular butt connector and if you notice on the edges, it's kind of loose. It's not real tight there. So what happens with these heat shrinks is when you apply heat, the ends of these shrink and get nice and tight on the wire. So we got two wires that are already pre-stripped and ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and stick those on each side there and go ahead and crimp them down. This is a 16 through 14 gauge butt connection. 
So I'm going to be using where the blue dot is to make my crimp. And again, after crimping, make sure to tug on the wires and make sure they don't pull loose. Okay, so the crimping's all done. Now it's time to start heat shrinking. A heat gun works well, but if you don't have a heat gun, you can just use a regular lighter. What you want to do is hold it to where the flames is barely touching the heat shrink and rotate it back and forth until it shrinks all the way. So here's an up close look at it now. Notice at the ends here it's nice and tight, so it's well insulated right where it meets the wire. The heat shrinks also provide a stronger connection and help protect from corrosion. Okay, next on the list is female and male terminal connections. These are very common for speaker wires. The male connection plugs into the female connection and can be detached and reattached when needed. So I got some wires already pre-stripped here and ready to crimp. So we're going to go ahead and insert that into the terminal. And you don't want to push the wire all the way through. You want to just push it to where the wire just barely pushes through and barely shows like this. Then go ahead and crimp it. This is a 22 through 16 gauge terminal, so we're going to be using where the red dot is on our pliers to make our crimp. So this is the female side of the connection. Now we're going to do the same thing with the male side of the connection. And as always, make sure to give a little tug on the wires to make sure you have a nice tight connection. Okay, now I have a nice male and female connection here that can be attached and detached whenever needed. And keep in mind, these particular connections don't have any shielding. Since these connections have bare metal exposed, they're not designed to be used where they could come in contact with a ground or a power source. Next up is a ring terminal connection. These come in very handy if you're trying to connect your wire to an automotive battery, or if you're trying to connect a wire to a ground screw. And for this demonstration, I'm going to be using 8 gauge wire and an 8 gauge terminal connection. So my wire strippers are only rated up to 10 gauge, but I got a trick to show you how to make these work still for bigger wire. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the wire in the biggest gauge hole on the wire strippers, which is going to be 10 gauge, which is located at the top here. So the trick is, is not to squeeze all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and insert it in that top hole and then just barely start squeezing. I'm going to make sure to leave a gap there. If I squeeze all the way down, I'm going to chop through some of the wire. So I'm just barely going to squeeze and rotate it back and forth about six times and then try to pull it off. If the sheathing doesn't pull off, go ahead and press just a little bit harder and rotate it another six times and try again. And keep repeating this until it pulls off. Of course, you could just buy some bigger wire strippers, but if you're on a budget, this could save you some money. Now it's time to go ahead and crimp the connection. And again, it'd probably be easier just to get some bigger crimpers, but you can make these work. I'm just gonna go ahead and use where the yellow dot is and crimp as hard as I can. Then I'm gonna rotate the terminal 180 degrees and crimp on that side also. And I know everyone's probably going to be saying you should just use some bigger wire strippers and wire crimpers, but when you're on a budget, you can't afford every tool there is. So sometimes you just got to make what you have work. Okay, I've got a nice ring terminal connection now. I've tested it out. Now it's time to move on to the next connection. This is a spade terminal connection, and these come in very handy for mounting underneath screws. You just loosen the screw, slide this connection underneath of it, then tighten it back up to secure it. These crimp onto the wire the same way as the male and female terminal connections, it just has a different end to it. These connections come in very handy for connections on an audio amplifier. And last on the list is a splice connector. You see a lot of these type of connectors when you buy trailer light wire harnesses that splice into your existing wiring. These type of connections are usually included with the wire harnesses. So here's an up close look at it. These connections are meant to connect a loose wire or a new wire to an existing wire. So this existing wire would already be on your vehicle. Then this tab will push down that makes contact with both wires and makes a splice connection. So there's two sides to the splice connection. One side's closed. That's where you're going to insert your new wire, your loose wire. Then on the front side where it's open, that's where it's going to attach to the existing wire that's already on your vehicle. Once you have both wires in place, it's time to go ahead and start closing the lid here. And to make this lid close all the way, you're going to have to use a pair of pliers. And with a pair of pliers, what's going to happen is you're going to start pushing that metal tab down until that lid clicks in place on the bottom. You want to make sure not to press too hard and you might chop right through the wires. Normally the lid will just click right into place when you press it down with the pliers, but sometimes you'll just manually have to click it in place. Here's a closer look where it clicks into place. Here's the open position, and here's what it should look like when it's closed. And as always, make sure to tug on those connections, make sure you have a nice strong connection. Thanks for watching. This is CLS All in One. If you want to hear more from me, please like and subscribe. And to see more of my videos, just click any of these categories to see more.